Welcome back, everybody. This is IINS, or CCNA Security, for those of you that are passionate about Cisco certifications. My name is Anthony Sequera. We're glad you're back. And as you remember, at the end of our last class session, we were talking about AAA services in the network infrastructure. And we know that we can go ahead and do AAA utilizing the local databases of our Cisco devices, but we know this would be a nightmare from a scalability perspective, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the way in which we would implement a truly scalable implementation of AAA services, and that would be to use that access control server product that we have available from Cisco Systems. Yeah, we want to take advantage of a centralized database, don't we? We want to take advantage of that centralized database that is going to allow our Cisco routers and switches and firewalls to go ahead and do the AAA checks, security checks, and various parameters against that centralized database. Yeah, we don't want to have to worry about these AAA security configurations on a device-by-device -device basis. As a simple example, just imagine this. You have 7,000 Cisco devices and 10,000 user accounts. Can you imagine trying to keep all of those local databases synchronized as your users leave your company and are added to your company, it would be a pure nightmare. So what we wanna do is we want to centralize the AAA processes. Here's an example of how this would work. And in this particular case, we're looking at authentication. So we have this remote client out here and this remote client in the first step hits traffic against our perimeter router. The perimeter router says, hold on a moment here. I need to get your username and password information. So that information is presented to this particular user and they complete their username and their password. And then this is sent back to the perimeter router. The perimeter router passes this information in step three to our Cisco ACS server. Notice there are other options, right, that we could utilize, including an access control system physical appliance, but the most common is to have the ACS implemented on a Windows server system. So we run it as software sitting on top of the Windows server software, by far the most common implementation. This device checks its database and says, yep, that person is just fine. That person checks out. So it, in step four, returns this information to the perimeter router, which in turn returns this information to the remote client and allows that remote client onto the network. Or maybe, like we said in the previous class, maybe it allows that person to configure the perimeter router. Maybe it's an administrator. Yeah, see, that's the beauty of the ACS system is that it can control a wide variety of security controls in your environment. It can control your administrators that are trying to come in and configure your devices. It can control your users that are trying to go through your device into the network. It can even integrate with physical security in your infrastructure. Yeah, it can even integrate with you know, security systems on locked doors. It's a very, very flexible system. And a lot of companies today, they have a situation where they already have all of their user accounts properly defined in some kind of a data store. For instance, if they're a Microsoft shop, there's a really good chance they'll have all of their users already nicely categorized and defined in the Microsoft Active Directory store. So they would not want to duplicate this information on the access control server, and of course they don't have to. The access control server can be configured to turn to that Active Directory in order to access 
the user account information that's already been predefined. Gotta love it. So support for LDAP, Active Directory, Novell Directory services, even open database connectivity stores is one of the great features of the ACS. Another great feature of the ACS is it functions via a very easy to use graphical user interface. So the configuration of the ACS server is simplified with a nice GUI. Now we said that Windows installations of the ACS were by far the most popular installations. And that is absolutely true. And notice there is a wide variety of Windows products on which we can install ACS. I would imagine we would find out there right now, Windows Server 2008, and we would find the installation done on enterprise or standard editions of that particular product. But notice there is backwards compatibility all the way back to Windows 2003 Server Service Pack 2. Some environments are going to not trust that type of a configuration and they're going to go out and they're going to get a secure ACS appliance. Yeah, they're going to get a secure ACS appliance and they're going to take advantage of a Linux-based trim down hardened operating system on which to operate their ACS. Notice they are still going to use the web-based graphical user interface, but they are running this GUI to control the ACS that is running on a much more secure, much more robust environment, the trimmed down hardened Linux-based appliance. Pretty cool. Now, you may have heard of a device called the ICE. Yeah, what an ominous name, right? The ICE appliance. This is new and improved security technology from Cisco Systems, and this is a new device from Cisco that's going to combine the functionality of the Cisco Secure Access Control Server with the Cisco Network Admission Control Solution. Yeah, this is an amazing device that combines the best of both worlds. What this device would seek out to do would be to do that real intelligent context-aware security, right? This device would literally be able to say, okay, who are you? Anthony Sequera? Okay, you want on my network? You need to be running Windows 7, Service Pack 2, and you need to have McAfee's virus scan with this certain patch level. Wow. So this device will be able to combine the ACS with the NAC functionality to give us the most robust admission control that we've ever had from Cisco systems in our networks. So wanted to talk a little bit with you there about and give you a preview of Cisco's ICE. Yeah. And ICE stands for, what does that stand for? Uh, let's see. Integrated Security Engine, maybe? Oh, I better look it up because now I'm embarrassed that I don't know. I love the name ICE, right? But let's, uh, let's make sure we know exactly what that stands for. The ICE stands for the Identity Service Engine. The Identity Service Engine. Pretty cool. So this is a best of breed technology that is going to combine, as we said, the functionality of several different Cisco products into one.